So here's the deal. Um, your zinc level is okay. Your protein is borderline low. Really? Yeah. I know. Well, and the problem is you have an open wound, and open wounds leak protein. So there you are. So you're going to have to get more in. So whatever you're eating now, double, double, it. It. double it. You know what I mean? Holy moly. And the, and the thing to do moly. would be moly. to just get uh, like chicken tenderloin, throw them some barbecue sauce, make a whole crock pot, and just snack on those. Whenever you get hungry, basically no carbs at all. Just try and get all your all your fullness from good old no fashioned No carbs at all. Well, you okay. can do, you can, I mean, it's not like, wow. not like they're making you sick. I just don't want you to get full on carbs and not get that protein right. benefit. Because that's really what it's going to take to heal you is to have a little reserve. Yeah. Um, other than that, where we're at is you're not going to okay. close on your own all the way. Guaranteed. So we're going to have to do surgery if you're interested. I think while you have the pick line, while you're getting antibiotics, that's as good a time as any because we'll have a little, a little angel on our shoulder in terms of the antibiotics. I'm, I'm happy about that. But here's the problem. You, the, when you have a decubitus ulcer, then it likes to open up when you sit on it or when you transfer. So the, the recurrence rate for these sorts of things is 80%. 80%. Massive recurrence rate, which is why I hate to operate on them, right? Okay. So the, the only way that you can avoid having an early problem is to do either side or stomach time for 60 and that means no to Okay. So completely awful, basically. Completely so boring and miserable for you in the bed. And we can do that either at a care facility, like a nursing home, or you can do it at home. Um, but we need to get you the right kind of mattress, because, you know, I don't want to get you trochanteric well, ulcers. She's, she's, she's doing yeah. really good with, with our mattress, because out of uh, 24 hours, she stays 18 hours by now. Or okay. on bed. Good. You know, you know, if you had to get in the chair to do something, go to an appointment, I mean, as long as you exercise common sense, the problem mostly is the transfer. Because, you know, for six weeks, as, as a wound only attains 70% of the original tensile strength of skin, and it achieves 70% at six weeks. So it's always going to be easier to tear open, but for the first, you know, before six weeks, you can just pop it open. And if you do, we're back to square one. We will have had a big surgery and you will have wasted however much time you spent before that. So it's a big deal. So before we do this, you need to be like mentally in the zone for a big long haul. The, 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 the thing that, um, the rest of it, my wife uh, takes me, takes care of me uh, fantastically mm -hmm. with, uh, so I don't need to go into a rest home or anything like that, but uh, it's the biggest thing, one of the difficulties is transferring onto a toilet, mm -hmm. and, and you say that I am not going to transfer, I can't transfer at all. Well, I don't use a bedpan would probably be the way to do it, or some sort of bowel program. I, I, I guess I need to learn how to do digital, digital stimulation while I'm in laying in the bed. Laying sideways on, yeah, I mean, it's, a, it's an enormous pain, unfortunately. And a lot of my patients, we just give them an ostomy so they don't have to deal with it. But that's a big deal. You know, once, once you get an ostomy, you may always have an ostomy. Mm -hmm. Holy moly, man. Golly gee. Yeah, these, these ulcers are, I mean, they're serious because they're so hard to get rid of. And so we have to do everything we can, and we're still faced with, you know, one in five actually do. Okay. Um, just for grins and giggles, I was thinking about um, mentioning, what about if they like uh, did that stem cell, throwing some stem cell in there too whenever you're doing the surgery and that maybe might help, help well, the situation? Well, the stem cells we got to get from somewhere and usually it's fat. You don't have any fat. So. Okay, but they can't get it from my bone, from my bone marrow. Well, they could, but there's no—I mean, there's no indication for it. You know, like just throwing stem cells into a wound just waste stem cells. Yeah. Nothing good comes of it. Yeah. Well, I was the reason why I was kind of thinking about it was because it's below my injury level, so I don't feel as good below my injury level. But if you took some stem cells, then it might 
increase the possibility of fear. That, that would basically be experimenting on you. And, you know, that's not, I'm not here to do that. I'm just here to do the tried and true stuff. Okay. So, no on the stem cells. Okay. So that should be it's a great idea. One of these days, that is going to be the answer. But we've got to figure out how to control them first. Mm-hmm. And right now, you know, I can put in stem cells and, you know, they could grow into arms and legs or something. And that, and that would be awkward. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So here's the deal. You're just going to have to decide when to do this. If you want, if you even want to do it. I mean, you can keep doing local wound care. You'll have a wound. The wound will stay there. The way it sits now, it's not going to heal. The skin is going into the hole. Period. End of story. The thing about it was, doctor, is that I ran into that sepsis. And whenever I ran into the sepsis, then I had to take the antibiotic. And then whenever I took the antibiotic, then I had diarrhea incessantly, mm-hmm. all the time. And whenever I had the diarrhea, then we couldn't have the wound back. And the wound back is what was slowly pulling mm-hmm. it. And I think that, and I also think that having uh, uh, having you do the uh, curatage was, uh, was also... Um, uh, stopping that skin from from growing. There's no that question it's better than it was. Way better. The problem is now the hole. The hole has skin. It's a tube of skin. So just like your throat or your anus, it won't ever heal because it's got skin on it now. So that has to be cut out. That's the only way to get it to heal all the way. Guaranteed. I mean, I'd, I'd love to let you heal on your own. But at this point, you won't. So, so if and a, a thing that you probably that you couldn't probably couldn't do would be if, to, if you went in there and you took that skin out and then we did when we went back to the curatage thing and then tried to close it up that way or would the skin you think the skin would come back? I, th- well, I think it would come back. And as long as we're in there doing surgery, let's let's swing for the fences, right? You know, I'm not gonna go for a, a single if we're if we're in the, in the if, if we're in the operating room. So. If, if I'm going to take out all that skin, you might as well see if I can get it to heal and get it done with all in one shot as opposed to cut off the skin, see if we can get it to heal the old-fashioned way, have the skin grow back in, cut it out. You know, that's, that's not a very surgical approach to anything from my standpoint. Either we do it or we don't do it. I see. I see. Um, and the, the, the thing about it is which if I were to do the digital stimulation with my, you know, in the bed, then I would probably need to pull up my legs a little bit mm-hmm. to, and then I'm compromising, putting a little, putting stress on that uh, surgery that you did, and that's one of my biggest concerns. Well, you know, we've got a problem. I mean, you, you've got a sore on a part of your body that you need to use every day. But we, there's nothing we can do that will change that other than give you an oxygen, right? So if you don't want an ostomy, then we'll be we'll be taking a risk. You do have to lay on it at some point during the day. You do have to put pressure on it. You know, either it works or it doesn't work. That's the bottom line. Well, wow. The help for me you're gonna get that you to be able to do as much time as you can in the chest. I mean in the in the bed, not in the chest. Well, you need as much time. You have to do it all the time. All it takes is one wrong move and all of a sudden it's Everything pops open. So I would have to bring you food. You mm-hmm. won't be going to the kitchen. Yeah. You're, you're going to exercise in bed right mm-hmm. like this, not up. Are you going to be able to take that? Yeah, it's just the, the thing about it is it's six a poop. Six months, right? You know, six weeks. Six weeks. Uh, so why, that's that's the not the why don't you why don't you check it out? Mm-hmm. See what you can do. Like Just do some trial runs. See if you can develop a bowel program that you can do on your side. Um, I don't know if you have anyone that can help. Well, you're on the side away from the room, so you're laying on the other side. Um, do the rectal stimulation. Are you familiar with how to do that? Um, so, so I got the boo-boo on this side, so I would be, so I would be laying on this side, yeah. so that if the poo-poo wouldn't go into the boo-boo. That's exactly right. Sorry on that, and see if you can figure out how to do it. It's harder because that's not really. And that's the way the bowel goes. Um, 
Do you want information on what what these entail? Because I happen to also be the seller. Well, that's not for us. Um, do you want an appointment with the colorectal surgeon? Why take another week? Come see me in a week, okay? And let me know what the deal is. You develop the bowel program. If you don't think you're gonna be able to do it, we'll send you in to see this colorectal surgeon. But you know, like I said, an ostomy can be forever. You know, sometimes they can reverse them. Sometimes they can't. Sometimes you're just like, well, this is easier anyway than doing the bowel program. So, you know, we'll see. But you know, these are all these are like milestones. You know, life changing, potentially life changing events. So, think on it, talk about it, and see what you can do to avoid it with uh, your own bowel regimen. Wow. Okay. Okay. Well, we so, so, I like talking to you about it because it's all, you know, I want it all to be crystal clear what we're getting into because, you know, you're the one that has to do all the work. I just show up and do an operation, have you in the hospital a few days, and I send you home, and now you're stuck doing all the work and, mm -hmm. you know, being bored for six weeks. You're going to be taken care of, so it's, you know, talk, talk it over. I won't be bored because I have the internet and I have things, so I'm you used to. You will be bored with the dietary side. You're not able to do this. I'll see you in a week. Talk about it. See what you can do about a bowel uh, plan. And I want you to start keeping a, a protein, a grams of protein journal every day. Uh -huh. Just try and figure out how much you're getting. Yeah, wow. Okay. 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 Thank okay. you, guys. I appreciate right. it. You're welcome. I'll be right back. Thank Bye. you, doctor.